Hello, everybody. We're back. Uh, we're back for this afternoon at uh, uh, EPL is New York. Um, so after a first morning on healthcare in the industry track, we will talk a little bit more about uh, the retail industry, the e-commerce industry, and also the physical retail world industry, and actually how they can, how they are already using APIs or how they can use APIs to actually relieve the, the challenge of, of our digital and programmable economy. Uh, so for, as a first speaker, we will have uh, Tanya Vlahovic. So Tanya, uh, I invite you to join the stage. Uh, you will be joining shortly, if, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I just uh, clicked on the button that should have you uh, on stage, uh, right? Are you able to to join, Tanya? Hi, Tanya. Are, are you able to join? I hope we we don't have the same issue as this morning. Uh, yeah, can we send uh, Tanya again on stage? Okay, we're trying back. waiting for Tanya to connect. Uh, the latest polls actually have some funny answers. Uh, what's the API definition format you use internally for your APIs? 80% of people say OpenAPI, 20% say RAML. And uh, what's to, what is to you the most useful API style for the industry between RPC, REST, CRUD style, REST, hypermedia style, GraphQL, or even driven? Uh, yeah, 46% say REST level two, as we can imagine. Hi, Tanya, glad to have you here. <laughs> yeah, so we're very glad to have you back at the PI days again. Uh, and uh, now it's digital, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but for, for the best of the whole world, right? Uh, from New York, but broadcasting in the world. Uh, can, are you able to share your screen for all our attendees? Okay, so application, okay. Do you see it? Yeah, we can see your screen, and if you go full screen, it will be perfect. Full screen. <laughs> okay, so yep. am I all set? We are set. Let's go for twenty-five minutes together. Thank you and enjoy. Hello, everyone. I'm really excited to be here today, even if it is only virtually. My name. Yeah, Tanya, sorry, we don't, we oh. just black screen. It was working, oh. but when you went full screen, it's just black now. Oh, so, uh, and when should I get started? I'm gonna get, uh, okay. So let's try again. Is it good? Yeah, now it, now it works perfect. Thank you. So let me, let me try to go uh, back and forth, just a sec. Is it good? Yeah, no, you're a developer. Okay, so tell me when, uh, please tell me when should I get started? Right now or? Right now, perfect. Okay. Hello everyone. I'm really excited to be here today, even if it is only virtually. My name is Tanya Vlahovic. I'm head of developer ecosystem at eBay. In addition, I am leading the public API governance team and the overall API decomposition and namespace definition. I'm an active contributor to eBay technical standards and patterns related to both internal microservices and publicly exposed APIs. To make it simple, I'm involved in anything related to public APIs and large partner integrations at eBay. APIs connect businesses, people, and things. They are everywhere nowadays, allowing developers to unlock new opportunities for innovation. APIs are for businesses of all shapes and sizes. So our developers leverage our APIs to manage their business and extend their value proposition. From consumers' consumption of APIs, we'll learn a lot about the APIs, but also about our developers. Basically, we calculate the value of both our APIs and our developers. 
KYD stands for Know Your Developer. That's an acronym I came up with sometime last year. I heard someone saying that KYD should be a mantra for any developer's program, and it certainly is at eBay. In our time today together, there are three areas that I would like to share with you. The importance of a consistent API portfolio, details around the developer experience, and finally, the elements of a successful API strategy. So let's get started with the API portfolio uh, and its importance. We live in a connected digital age, and this is where APIs play an integral role. APIs are now the foundation on which modern business is built. They are the building blocks of the digital economy and an essential part of growing a successful business. I heard someone saying recently that only if you are operating a business from a cave, you don't need APIs. I just said that we live in a digital age, but it is also the age of the customer. And in the API realm, the customer is the developer. Developers could build so many different things using your APIs. It just depends on how they put the blocks together. In our case, our APIs are the front door to our marketplace platform. We give our developers data and capabilities at scale, and it's on them to innovate and to create fantastic buying and selling experiences for their users, who are at the end our customers. This year, we are celebrating the 20th anniversary of the eBay Developers Program. It's been 20 years with APIs and the developers program for us. The first set of the API capabilities we launched back in uh, November 2000. And it was to enable sellers to manage their eBay business at scale. These were SOAP-based APIs. And originally, the API access was granted to a limited number of licensed and vetted partners and developers. Then we move to buyer experience. And all of these APIs are still heavily used and they brought a lot of value to both eBay and our developers and customers. But they also show their age. And that is why we decided in 2016 to completely revamp our developers program and to deliver a new family of modern and consistent uh, RESTful APIs. We learned many lessons throughout our journey to revamp our developers program. APIs are forever. There is one chance to get it right. Once there are live integrations, it becomes impossible to change uh, the APIs without impacting partners' business. So plan and design expandable interfaces that will evolve and grow with the business. APIs express the value of a business, so they must be designed with a long-term vision in mind. Basically, design your APIs for a change, because change is the only constant. APIs represent the consumer's view of the capabilities. They are the front door to the portfolio of internal microservices, which represent the prod producer's view. The APIs have requirements that are tailored to external clients. Typically, the APIs are complex orchestrators that construct responses by leveraging fine-grained internal microservices capabilities. Internal APIs or legacy backend functionalities should not constrain the API design. And also, the APIs are not supposed to reflect the organizational charts. Have a good reason to introduce a new major version of your API. New APIs are not supposed to be slimmed down legacy services. Developers invested significant effort over the years to integrate with the old APIs. So migration to the new modern family of services is a long-term process. Evangelize API adoption, act on customer feedback, and support partners in new integrations. 
customer satisfaction is one of the most important metrics to measure the success of the API program. Basics of trade were established 150,000 years ago. So we are just translating this all into a digital model, basically exposing interfaces to business. And as simple as that, and okay, I'm skipping here all of the complexities that the global marketplace brings. But this is about translating a mental model into a digital model, APIs, so that developers understand it. And of course, with no offering surprises, APIs are products, so they must be designed and implemented in such a way to give their users, developers, good experience. And the details are not really the details in this whole process. The details make the design. We had an experience of 15 years dealing with the APIs when we started revamping our developers program back in 2016. And that was enough time to learn many lessons. When we started our journey to revamp the program, we agreed on three basic principles for our new APIs. To define boundaries, to have a consistent vocabulary across our portfolio, and of course, to define standards and specs. And this is really applicable to any software component. eBay is a marketplace where two main actors are buyers and sellers. Buyers and sellers see main marketplace entities in a bit different way, and that is what we followed. When it comes to standards, they literally define what the good citizen API is, and all of the APIs from the portfolio should be good citizen APIs to make it easier for uh, developers to uh, integrate with. Forward-looking organizations speak API to inspire innovation and to amplify reach. APIs evolve and grow with the business and open the door to new opportunities. The entire API portfolio is what really brings value to the organizations. Individual APIs are not sufficient for developers to innovate. The APIs are powerful when they're used together. So the portfolio dimension is what really matters. I compare integrating with APIs to cooking we provide healthy ingredients and its own partners to create fantastic recipes to delight their customers. And to achieve this, organizations must have a governance process in place. It's often a controversial topic, but it is essential to understand that the API governance is to make the right choice for your organization. It is supposed to be perceived as enabler rather than a gate. So define your standards and specs and enforce them. Focus on constraints, what needs to be done, but be flexible on the how part. Again, the only constant is change. New APIs will come, some other will disappear. And that is common to any developers program and API uh, ecosystem. The easiest way to do the APIs is to design intuitive and straightforward uh, contracts. APIs are interfaces for people. They are for human developers. So the API design should be developer-centric and focused on the consumption with an outside-in perspective. And remember, there is intelligence beyond artificial that still matters. So the APIs tell humans what organizations want their platforms to do. By providing consistent, predictable, and understandable names, the APIs tell their story and make documentation redundant to a great extent. The goal is to integrate with the APIs without spending too much time on documentation or filing developer technical uh, support tickets. Uh, so please don't take me wrong, documentation is important, but we still want the APIs to tell their story. So need for a further explanation typically indicates unnecessary complexity. An API is like a joke. And uh, in general, the APIs just do three simple things. And I'm going to, again, skip uh, here all of the technical challenges that are sometimes uh, behind these steps. But it's to gather data and to perform actions, format data, and serve data. And that's it. It is important to understand that 
uh, the governance process evolves. Uh, when we released the first set of uh, our new modern RESTful APIs in 2016, we did not pay attention to uh, the open APIs back. That came later, and we retroactively fitted it into our process and released open API documents for all our RESTful APIs. So for all our RESTful APIs, we have contracts based on the open API specs version two and three published. We are among the first in the industry, and I believe we are the first in the industry to publish open API documents based on the 3.0 spec. Uh, we chose the open API uh, because uh, it's vendor neutral. Uh, it's both human readable, machine readable. Um, there are plenty of mature tools, one of them being Swagger that generates clients in more than 40 technology stacks. So integration with our APIs is really uh, streamlined and simplified when leveraging uh, clients generated by um, Swagger. And it literally takes a few minutes to integrate with read-only capabilities. Again, you may say that the documentation is important and that is true to some extent, but again, our goal was to have intuitive, simple, consistent, and easy to integrate and consume um, the API, API portfolio. And um, that's pretty much it. So we will really urge developer community to leverage uh, the open API specification as much as possible. APIs are intermediaries um, that enable applications to interact. Uh, they are the building blocks for developers to innovate and create their own products. On the other side, SDKs are tools that simplify working with such building blocks by abstracting some of the concepts like cross-cutting concerns and so on. So SDKs enable developers to create new applications, new products, or basically new building blocks. To streamline integration with our APIs, we released uh, SDKs for some of our capabilities. Instead of providing black boxes to our developers, we decided to open source our SDKs and to give developers an opportunity to understand what's going on uh, in their um, integration with our APIs, basically to have full transparency and visibility. And uh, our SDKs are consistent, consistent with our APIs, are maintained and open source. And we welcome contributions from our uh, developer community. APIs enable our business to expand into new contexts, allow third parties to extend their value proposition, and also to bring their customers to us. Our vision hasn't changed over the last 20 years. We want a large and powerful ecosystem of developer applications that add value and benefits to our customers, buyers and sellers. And this is where our mutual interest is. Our goal is to share the success with our developers. Developers come in all shapes and sizes, but their success is our success. To successfully integrate with the APIs, developers need documentation, support, uh, tools, SDKs, reports, and so on. On the other side, developers help organizations to shape their products. They create new digital products by combining APIs in a unique way. I just mentioned that the APIs are the building blocks. And it all depends on how developers put the blocks together. API usage is essential to any API program. APIs must be up and running. So it's important to have monitoring and alerting in place. Vanity metrics, such as number of developers in API calls, uh, calls are okay uh, to illustrate the scale of an API program. If you can't measure it, it doesn't exist. Developer experience is all about customers, but it is equally important to pay attention to the API providers and give them tools and dashboards to understand how their APIs are used. API is like a story like a book, it's necessary to fully understand it. So this is to flip the coin and also to focus on the API providers. 
in addition to the consumers. Organizations do not measure the success of their API strategy by looking into vanity metrics. These are all operational metrics that show how healthy the platform is. Just think of a high-speed train. An electric motor voltage must be within a certain range, and that is vanity metric. On the other hand, uh, business metrics are the reasons the platform is built. A bullet train is built to transport people. So the API usage analysis beyond operational metrics and pure insights into um, the API availability. It is crucial to assess the value the APIs bring and to understand the benefits coming from third-party integrations. Basically to have accurate insights into use cases and the API usage patterns. And this is the main driver to enhancing the APIs over time. I mentioned that the API evolve and the API ecosystems evolve. Some of the APIs uh, flourish while some other APIs simply disappear. And any workaround tells a lot. Most likely there is something missing in your portfolio. In this process, as I said, some of the APIs will disappear, but to understand which way to go, uh, it is a must to look into data, basically to put the play button on data. And this is exactly what we are trying to do at eBay. And data ages like wine. The more the data, the better the behavioral analysis is. From customers' uh, consumption of APIs, we learn a lot about the APIs, but also about developers. APIs could easily and quickly turn against organizations. They live in a connected digital age and data sharing is part of our lives. So it is essential for any API program to implement data protection principles and to address privacy concerns. A continuous API strategy, auditing strategy is crucial to ensure the APIs are reliable digital assets. Keeping the API safe and treating the API security as an enabler rather than a gate leads to preventing good actors in the API ecosystem from being affected by bad actors' behavior. That is one of the main goals of any developer um, ecosystem and program. Today, we talked about the importance of a consistent API portfolio, uh, developer experience, and the elements of a successful API strategy. To wrap up, the vision of any program is a large and powerful ecosystem of developer applications. So it is essential to be in the game and follow the right strategy to become a champion. This is all I had for today. Thank you. I think we have some time for questions. Yeah, we have uh, two minutes for question actually. Uh, one question about like the the fact that you've been one really I think the first really uh, to have an open API program at eBay uh, with sellers and uh, um, how do you manage all this technology change over time because we see now new technology like GraphQL gRPC so so like there are new technologies coming but you've you've been the transition to SOAP to REST uh, so how do you what can you say to companies who are who wants to stay in the game and be in the game with all these technological changes? Yeah, it's actually a challenge, right? Because when there are live integrations, it's difficult to move. So what we did uh, at eBay, so we still have those SOAP-based APIs. We don't want to retire them. They bring a lot of uh, you know, value to eBay and to our customers. And it's difficult to ask tens of thousands of third-party developers to go and change their integration. What we are trying to do is to give them some sort of like of incentives to move to the new APIs, basically to give them new capabilities, to give them an easier way to integrate with. Uh, for example, for REST APIs, we have these contracts that are based on the open API spec, which means that's way easier to generate the client and to start calling our REST APIs then to integrate with the SOAP-based APIs. So that's what we are actually trying to do. But that is a process because we have a policy. We don't want to impact uh, the business that brings a lot of value. So we just have to be patient and to work closely with our developers. Uh, we actually 
take care of developer relationships, uh, meet once a month with our top developers and try to uh, uh, provide them what they need to uh, successfully integrate with us. So that's a process. Yeah, so it's mostly a nudge, right, to uh, to, pu to to push people to adopt new APIs. Maybe a, a question we have about like uh, how many APIs internally, if, if it's a number that you can share. How many? I can actually share what we have on the public API side. Yeah. So uh, uh, under the new RESTful uh, family of the APIs, we have actually 26 families and around 250 methods. Okay. If I include uh, uh, our traditional uh, old soap based uh, APIs, I think we are around 600 uh, methods, 600 APIs. And that's, that's a decent number. Uh, yeah. So for architects to take care of all of these APIs, for our technical support to provide support for 600 APIs, and also for our tech writers to understand what these APIs are doing and how to uh, document them and so on. So we are actually talking about the huge scale. So And, and we have around between 150 to 250 million API calls every hour. 250 so, million API calls per hour. That's, yes, exactly. That's kind of uh, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, thank it you is. for sharing the story with us. Uh, you are definitely one of the thought leaders in the space with eBay and with you, especially as the API uh, like manager. Let's say colleagues like that, a manager of the API. Thank you very much uh, for in introducing this track on the uh, on this afternoon of API is New York. Uh, yeah, now we will receive uh, Christopher uh, Pirro. Uh, so I will invite you, Christopher, to join the stage uh, uh, right now. Uh, 